What would you like me to do? Well, I don't want to move inside. Vent the fumes first, Sam. That's it, it's working. The fumes are dissipating now. How bad is it? The rack units have been damaged beyond any functional use. Overall, that's not too bad, considering. What was the source, Sam? We need to stop it happening again. What would you like me to do, Emma? Inspect the damage in the module, Sam. Residue on panel LFE1 indicates a potential source. What? That's just a blank plate. Let me see. Something is coming out of the side. What is that? It's like a thick grease. Or oil. Dark red. There's maybe something in storage above that's leaking. Oh, come on! What now? Sam, give me a status report. There is significant stress being applied to EAS-12. Immediate separation Recommended. Please, if there is anyone in Module 12, make yourself known now. Let us in the module. Someone, please respond. This is getting much worse. <sighs> okay. Sam, get ready for the separation procedure. First, process my authorization code and give me a security override key. 14424133324. Sam, come on! Authorization. 14424143324.
Sam. We've stopped spinning. We've stabilized. I think... I think we're okay. Listen, I'm going to relocate you to the external cameras and see if we can get a better view of the station. Signals are weak, distorted. I don't understand. We should be right above Houston. Can you detect any damage, Sam? EAS. 12 is still tethered with unusual structural damage. It's like a hole has been cut out of it. What would do that? minor exterior damage to module EAS-4, likely due to the internal fire. Yeah, I think we got lucky there. Damaged. The damage seems to be localized to the upper part of the arms. I'm going to connect to the distance cam. We should see where we are above Earth and if we've lost any altitude. brought you here, it seems. What? Why?
I restarted your core systems. You weren't making any sense. Let's try this again. Sam, voice authenticate. Dr. Emma Fisher, 140412. Okay. Okay. So, Sam, here's the deal. I'm stuck in the EAS arm for now. I think it's related to power, but a lot of the hatches are fully locked down, so I'm going to try something different here. Okay, that's audio at least. Almost there, just a sec. Okay, Sam, I have rigged a connection sphere for you to use. You should be able to take control of this and fly around the station. It'll let you reach parts of the station your cameras can't see, and it'll let you wirelessly connect to non-station devices, like laptops. There. Looking good, Sam. Okay. Let's see if you can move it. Fly over to me. Great. Now turn around 180 degrees to face me and fly back. Something isn't right, hang on. Try again. Good, there are more controls for translation and rotation, but I'll let you figure them out. You should still be able to identify objects and relay information to me like any other camera. Try it now. Emma, please repeat your instruction. Come on, Sam. Respond on that sphere on the table. Connection sphere is offline. Okay, great. That works. Now, you can release yourself from the sphere and return to your main OS just like before. Try it now. 
Sphere tracking is online, so its location will be displayed on your station map. To reconnect to your sphere, you can either quick connect directly from your map, or you can use a nearby module camera to access it. Reconnect to your sphere now. Great. Can't believe that all actually worked. Right. So, the rest of the station is dark, and the horizon arm is running on emergency power. The solar panels give us next to nothing this far from the sun. However, we do have an experimental fusion reactor on board. The EFR. If that